to another YouTube video and we are 65 days out from nationals and uh, I just did my top single of the day and uh, went to 115 kilos which looked pretty good so it's supposed to be an RB7 like feeling like almost like I have three reps in reserve so not exactly because reps in reserve is RER and uh, RP is rate rate of perceived exertion and then you also got QR which is basically quality of reps so you can like combine all of those but it's quite easy to think about RP as all right RP7 as like last warm up so basically like I have like something inside of me that wants to go 117 and a half it could have done a good 117 and a half single but that 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 would be like an RP8 top set and since RP7 is like a last warm up, I stay at 115 kilos, also feeling like I have like three reps ish in reserve. And it felt really good. Um, so, nationally, um, at nationals, the judging when I don't want to say that the judging is harder uh, nationally, but um, the rule is written a little bit differently. Uh, when it comes to what is heaving and like sinking the bar using your uh, sinking the bar and uh, I want to be in a position where I can be 100% sure that my technique is approved I have like I only got three white lights at worlds for example so we know it's fine but at the same time um, it's 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 a bit tricky and you know as an athlete it's my responsibility to make sure that my technique is good and solid enough to create no doubts no matter what so that's what I'm trying to do and what I've done recently is when I, I still sink but I just move my feet forward which is car causes my arch to go a little bit smaller and it also causes me to not be able to use my legs or body as much if it gets heavy which basically has causes me to not use my body too much in a way that it may look like heaving for example although heaving is specifically supposed to be when you lower the bar after and uh, pause but basically it's just way stricter and i can build more strength in that either way like previously when i do like bigger sink I only do that for my single and not for none of the working sets no working reps anything because I want to train my bottom strength and actually like for me because I've trained sinking for such a long time it's quite easy and um, so it's not like I have to perfect that technique anymore in that sense and um, I just have to build bottom strength and then the stronger I get the more strict it becomes automatically so I can just focus on that. So this was 115 kilos. Now I got four sets of five reps. I'm actually feeling very good today. Yesterday I was toast, absolutely toast. Um, fatigue has hit. And uh, this is the first week of the second block of prep. So I got further prep since I started prepping. Uh, basically I've been prepping since Worlds, but <laughs> uh, since I started my countdown mental prep, um, I had three blocks, one of them is done, finito. And now I'm on the second and it's not like a deload week, but it definitely is a little bit easier and that has been nice because I've been needing it. I've been fatigued as heck. Gosh, um, at the end of last week, I, I almost felt sick. Like I almost felt like a, I wasn't pepper, pepper, touching wood, wasn't sick, but it almost felt like I have a fever just because like my, ever since Thursday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, my heart was pounding. I was warm and my head was dizzy because um, I was so tired. So I had to like skip some walks and stuff just to, just to rest and go a little bit easier on the session because I was, oh my God, I was so toast. Um, but that's it, like how we wanted it at the end of the blog either way. So not concerned. Next week is actually gonna be a little bit easier than this week, um, but not like, still not a, like a full deload because this is like a, also a little bit easier than last week so I get like two not full recovery deload easy weeks but that's because nationals is around the corner so we don't want a crazy deload because uh, or something I want to I want to accumulate fatigue I want to get as close to overtraining as possible without crossing that line so that when we taper if I get too worn out too fatigued when we taper what's gonna happen is I'm gonna lose way too much 
but if we like just get to the line just before it, then a taper week is gonna be enough and that's gonna peak my strength for meeting. So that's basically the plan. Now I got my back offs and then I haven't checked the program what I got after. I think I got close grip bench probably. We're gonna see. And you're obviously gonna be able to follow along, but either way, I'm feeling good today. Energy is good, focus is good. <laughs> Let me tell you, it hasn't been for a week, so I've been so fatigued. Uh, but that's a nice thing, like just a few days of like small rest and like mental rest and like uh, it'll go a little bit easier in the sessions and you're gonna be back. So whenever you feel that, don't be scared because if you're training and you have a goal and you want to progress, you have to feel shitty and fatigued sometimes. And uh, you just don't want to cross the line where it goes to like too, too much. All right, back offs, rest is done, so let's go. Four sets of fives at 100 kilos, and I gotta say that, so I've done five sets at 100 kilos for thousands of times, almost soon, and so a lot of times, and, uh, but I gotta say that these gotta be like the best fives that I've done at 100. I definitely could have gotten heavier, um, but again, trying to stick within the RP. And I'm also really glad that like my body is very still, even though, so I used, I get the strength, although I don't arch as much. And that's like, because I used to have my feet forward and then I can press them and push with my legs all that I want. But since they're so far forward uh, or far in front, uh, what's happening is even though I can press all that I can and I chest up all that I can so that my lower traps are engaged, my shoulders are in position, and I still don't get into a high arch, but if I push my legs further back, my arch is gonna get really high because I have so much mobility. And what's happening when I push my chest, my shoulders back and engage my lower traps and my scapula, because of the mobility I have, I get in always into a really big arch. Um, and since I also got a big butt and that mobility, I can all easily go in just the bottom half of my butt and then the arch is gonna get bigger, but I get more of my butt down on the bench when I push my legs forward. And previously I couldn't do this. I tried this technique before, but it did not work. And I thought it wouldn't, but then I realized it's because of the shoes that I had. So I used to have like uh, first the Metcons, but I would always like, I couldn't press my feet into the floor because I would slide. And so I had my feet far in front, but I wouldn't get any kind of leg drive. And then I had Vivo Barefoots, it was the same thing. So with those kind of shoes, I had to like push my legs back to in order to get some leg drive uh, and to hold myself into position because otherwise I would lose position entirely. But then I, I uh, started working with Avances. So these, uh, crap, where is my foot? These, these shoes. Um, and when I got them, they, so what I noticed with the Vivo Barefoot, I really like those, uh, they're amazing, but after using them for like a little more than a month, the grip started getting really bad. Uh, so I would start sliding in the deadlifts and I would have to always like spray water underneath in order to not slide. Um, and that obviously was kind of, if I did push like water under, they would stick, but if I didn't, I would slide. And especially when you get like shocked and stuff and the dull is on the floor, it would happen. And like the floor that I have at home, it's not like the most grippiest. If you have good shoes, it's good. But if it's not the most grippiest floor, but at the same time in competition, the platform that we compete on, and sometimes there's a lot of baby powder and shock on the floor that they can't get away. And you know, on those mats, the grip isn't always good either. So I like training at this because then it's not so much of a difference. But anyway, with the Vences, like the grip is way, way, way better. Like way, way better. Um, so now I can have my feet far in front and I'm still gonna get a good leg drive and they're gonna be stuck in place. 
And that's allowed me to like, okay, now I can have my legs forward and still get tension, meaning depth and everything regarding the bench with the rules is way easier and I don't lose a lot of strength. However, previously, since I couldn't use leg drive, it would just be me having my feet there, just trying to tense my, my abs to like, and my core to just stake in place, but then I would lose way more, more strength from having the feet in front, but now I don't. Um, and that's actually really nice. And it feels, it feels good, it feels solid. Um, so I like it. It's, um, yeah, it's been a game changer for sure. So uh, obviously this is a recommendation. It's not an ad or anything. I don't, don't got any kind of discount or whatsoever, but either way, I would just say, get the advances and you like the powerlifting. I don't know, I think I have like an eight picks. Like, I don't think the model really matters because I heard everyone talking about like, the grip is good, so you just get whatever. But still, if you want good powerlifting shoes, I use them for all three with good grip, like really good grip. I would definitely recommend them because um, they're barefoot and they're good. The Vivos, I could, I tried using them for the squat, but I couldn't because like the insides, like on the sides of the foot, uh, it was too wobbly. And that's why I used the Metcons to get some stability on the sides of my feet. But these, they have that stability on the sides. Yet like the Metcons is not flat enough to use in the deadlift. So now I can just use the same shoe for all three, which is, which is nice. And so far I haven't found that the grip is like, loosening up but yeah sorry for for that but either way it's made a huge difference to be able to like like shoes and firmness it really matters so for me that's helped me a lot with now with the bench rule and uh, just get in depth and get a good position without like sliding my feet still getting leg drive and that's been an issue like I could always do a feet up bench and be in position to get depth but I'm not at my strongest unless you can use and facilitate all the muscles in your body, which is my goal to lift the most amount of weight. So that's been helpful. Now I got close grip bench, two sets of eights. I think 80 kilos ish, we're gonna see. I'm gonna warm up at 70 kilos first, and then we shall see what's there on the day. So this Sunday, Sunday, even though I was fatigued as heck, <laughs> and Saturday was the session, bench session that was actually like the best of them. And I did PR with six reps at 90 kilos. I like realized this block at the beginning of this block that, so I've been working with Yoey Flex as a friend so for over a year now. And we always have close grip bench, but something that I've done is I've actually not pushed my close grip bench. I've like just done it. This is a weakness I have. Like I don't really push my accessories. I do my accessories, but, and I focus on the technique in them, but I never like really pushed and tried to truly increase the weight, especially like my close grip bench. So that would be there like, 
okay, I'm doing my close grip bench, but I'm not trying to like really increase the weight. And I realized that since I'm trying to build more strength in a longer range of motion, um, actually facilitating and using the close grip will be really good. So I started like, okay, focusing and writing up the weights that I do, like just track it. And then I started PR. So this block I've been PRing every single week, two times a week in my close grip bench. So um, it kind of fall out at 90 kilos. That was kind of heavy, but maybe could have done 92 and a half. But so that was nice. I mean, I'm going to keep it up. I think that it definitely helps with my bottom strength to like really focus on that and like the dumbbell press trying to actually increase the weight and not just like just do go through the motions and think that it's going to help me either way. And um, but so that felt good. The one leg, one arm tricep extensions also felt pretty good. And um, I'm not really happy about my technique completely. I get, I got a lot of connect mind to muscle connection in my triceps, but not like super happy with how it looked. I know I can definitely squeeze out more in my tricep in the bottom. So that's gonna be the goal for, for next week for sure. Yeah, yeah. But so overall, really good session. I'm gonna load this off and then it's time to work because it's morning now and so yeah, I always work after training. So I do at the moment. And so it's a work day coming up, but it was a good session. I'm very happy about it. Good first week of this block. I'm also really happy that I found like a good technique where I feel confident in, in the bench press as well, regarding depth, control, everything, and that strength still feels good in it. So yeah, I'm excited, very excited for, for the future. And um, let's keep going. I'm gonna see you in the next video, I don't know. Or it's gonna be but probably like squat session next week or something uh, we shall see but feeling i'm feeling good at the moment so gotta keep this up and time to just eat up during the day i guess uh, try to make sure i can recover from this one but yeah it was a good one a good productive work and stick stack i sticked with stayed in the pocket Let's just say I stayed within the RP within the pocket, and that's the important key part. But so, yeah, let's go inside. Thank you for watching. And also, I want to say thank you for the. I've been getting nice reactions and comments about these videos that you appreciate them. So, thank you for that. Uh, that means a lot. That's what makes it fun to do these videos. If you have any questions or anything, you can ask them below in the comment section, uh, of course. And. Uh, let me know what you think um, and also if you struggle, if you're prepping for a powerlifting meet, for example, you're struggling with, I don't know, if you're struggling with something with a mindset because there's a lot of things going on in our heads like being nervous and everything moving on to a meet and um, if you have anything that you're struggling with that you want me to address, talk about it, just let me know. Otherwise, stay safe, take care of yourself and thank you for watching. Let's go.